Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you some of the latest features from DataFetcher. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is AWS authentication. So we'll start by creating a request and selecting custom for the application. And then we need to add our URL as usual. And I'm going to use this URL here. So this is for the S3 service in AWS. And we're going to use the list items endpoint to get everything in this S3 bucket here. Now, AWS has a particular type of authentication that's a little bit tricky, and there was no way to do that before in DataFetcher. You couldn't set a Vera token or basic auth or any of these other options. But now we've got this AWS signature v4 option. And what that allows us to do is add our access key, our secret access key. And these keys obviously need access to the service that you're using in AWS. And once you've done that, we can now connect to that API and pull in all the items. So here we've just got the metadata, like the name and the last modified, but you can use other endpoints to actually pull in the contents of each of those items. And we can see those were pulled in here. So we'll have no code integrations with some of the AWS services coming out soon, but for now you can just use custom requests. The next thing to mention is a lot of the new integrations that we've added that are completely no code. So for example, Google Analytics 4, Google Ads, Facebook Ads, OpenSea, and OpenWeather. These are all completely new and we've either got videos on the YouTube channel or we'll have videos coming out very soon that will show you how to use these. So for example, I'm going to show you Google Ads. And it looks very similar to the Google Analytics or the Google Search Console integrations, where you select the date range that you want the data for, you select the fields you want, and anything you want to split by. So you, if you want a different record for each date, you'd split by the date. So I'll click Save and Run, and you can see that data is coming back. I'm going to turn this one off, and then import these two fields. And they're going to be added to my table. So the final thing to show you is an improvement to sequences. So let's go back to that first request and let's mess up the a URL so that it doesn't work correctly. So now when we try and run it, we're going to get an error. And let's create a sequence where we run that first request and then the second one. And when we run this, the sequence is going to pause after that first request because it failed. Now, obviously, there are some cases where you'd actually want to just move on to the second one and ignore that error. So what we can do in sequence now is use this failure handling option down the bottom. Turn that on and click run. And now it will ignore that first one, run the second one, and then show us down the bottom that request one failed. Now, this will work for scheduled requests as well, as well as the manual run that I just showed you. So we're going to have lots more videos coming out on all these new integrations, showing exactly how to use them. But for now, that's just an overview of some of the new integrations, AWS authentication, and the improvement to sequence failure handling. 